the solo starts off with these ideas that are sequenced a little bit. So we begin with a bar of the second fret, up to a minor third interval, down to the second. Now he begins to syncopate the rhythms here. So we have a fourth, minor third, to a second. Now on the record I think he plays, but I like to play, I think it sounds a little bit cooler. The comparison would be, Then we have the open strings up to a bar of the fifth fret, so that's a fourth, down to a major third, up to a fifth with the syncopated bits, fourth, down to a third, the same thing here. That happens twice, then we go back to the bar of the second fret, up to a fifth interval starting from the seventh fret, down to a fourth, syncopated with the sixth down to the 5th, down to the 4th, then we have, uh, it doesn't sound very good if you do the open E string here, so I just do what it sounds like on the record. And he does that three times before coming to this harmonics bit, where I'm basically just pulling off on the G string, but with my right hand, I'm getting this little space between my pinky and my palm, and that the string is going around there. And as you run it along the string, you get those harmonic sounds. The next part of the solo starts with two hits on this A minor triad. Open A string. Then we have a pinch harmonic on this B. Then a tap on this high B here. Then pull off onto the A, tap onto the high F sharp, pull off onto the E, slide onto the F sharp, then hammer on out of nowhere onto the C sharp, then hammer on with your right hand on the C sharp up high, then slide down with your right hand onto the C, and then pull off onto the C. This next lick starts with a hit on the A minor again. Then we're going to do a tapping lick using the F sharp minor pentatonic boxes. So it starts with a hammer on to this F sharp with your right hand, pull off onto the C sharp, and then hammer on to the E. That will sound like. Then we take that same shape down to the next string. Change this a little bit here, we use our third finger instead. Then the same thing here. That would sound like. Then we hammer onto this C sharp using our right hand. And we're going to just go down the F sharp minor now. Jumping around in thirds. These next few diminished licks can require some kind of specific picking. So it starts with a downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, we're going to pull off, hammer on, hammer on. That would be. Then it goes up a minor third, finishing on the C. Then the next diminished licks do downstroke, upstroke. Upper minor third, same thing, down, stroke, up, stroke, down, up, down, up. Then the last lick we have, down stroke with a pull off, up stroke, down, up, down. That would sound like... This next lick is probably the one that I find the hardest in the song. It's basically just fifths stretched out on one string. It's probably important to start this one on an upstroke as well. So it does the shape twice on the first string, before three times on the second string, three times on the third string, and twice on the last string, before finishing on the F sharp. That would sound like... It's probably worth noting to try and get as much 
movement for your pick in this first knuckle on your thumb. It's just an economy of motion thing and this lick is really quite fast so if you're going to try and make it easier for yourself that's one thing I would practice. This next lick is pretty easy, we're just jumping octaves between this F sharp minor here to this F sharp minor here. This next lick is basically tremolo picking octaves starting from this F sharp, moving chromatically up to the A and then finishing on the F sharp. That would sound like... When you're tremolo picking octaves, it's less so much trying to get both the strings at the same time, but more one at a time. Once you start speeding it up, it starts to create a bit of an illusion that you're doing them both at the same time. Then the solo finishes on this big C sharp chord. You could even add the low G sharp in there for some extra chunk. Makes it sound extra gnarly. <laughs> 